Great. Well, again, thank you all for this opportunity. And uh, what we thought we'd present to you all is a little bit of uh, feedback pertaining to our efforts uh, we've been um, encountering since our inception and since this idea has come about. Um, so it's entitled Growing Our Own. So in 2011, um, our tribal council had met and uh, were presented with a series of issues, um, not only from its tribal departments um, and its programs, but also from the community at large. And the community at large wanted the tribal council to address um, a lot of issues pertaining to um, education, transportation, uh, health care. Um, social services issues, and justice programs, um, and taking a look at those um, uh, issues and possibly being able to come up with solutions. And so the Tribal Council had decided to go ahead and uh, initiate um, its uh, activation of re-evaluating its current strategic plan that was in place in 2011. And so as a result of all the issues and concerns that had come about, the Tribal Council had initiated um, a, a three-tier understanding of what exactly could possibly be able to come out of this uh, review of the strategic plan. And the first one being uh, cultural and language preservation. Um, as you all had made mention in your presentations this morning and then at lunch uh, with the presentation uh, presented to us, um, it, it, it appears that your language and your culture and your identity is very much inrooted in your elders and also uh, being taught to your young ones. Um, within the San Carlos Apache, there is um, a, a gap between um, our, our identity and also um, understanding our culture as a whole. And so the Tribal Council recognized that and realized that there was a need as well to revitalize our language because we had realized that there was a good handful of um, uh, tribal members that from a certain age level that totally lost the language altogether. And so that was one of the keys that had come out um, of this uh, re evaluation of our strategic plan. And the second was in regards to education. Uh, we do have um, uh, Unified school districts. Uh, we have four separate unified school districts that educate our tribal members around uh, the reservation and also uh, uh, what we classify as a, a few junior colleges that uh, our tribal members are able to attend once they get done with their uh, high school uh, uh, education. And so the tribal council really took a look at the possibility of seeing what the concepts and the um, possibility would be for a tribal college to be implemented. And so they had that as, as one of their um, uh, results of the evaluation of the strategic plan. The other was in regards to addressing the alcohol and uh, drug abuse that our reservation was being rampant with. Um, in uh, 2005, uh, our uh, former chairwoman, uh, Kathy Wesley Kitchion, had initiated um, a full force um, awareness to not only our state congressional folks, but also to our federal congressional folks, and addressing the, the issue of methamphetamine and its, um, its, uh, its consequences of our tribal members uh, utilizing that drug. And I think that came about mainly because of the fact that there was really not that much knowledge about methamphetamine and its use and its, uh, and its uh, consequences uh, upon uh, those that use. And so it became more and more of an issue. And so it continued to, to carry in 2011 when the strategic plan was being evaluated by the Tribal Council. So as a result of that uh, review, uh, a community needs assessment survey was conducted and um, based on that community assessment review the planning department, the tribal planning department spearheaded that uh, particular evaluation. They reached out to you know, well over um, a couple of thousand tribal members that reside on our reservation and also outreach to those that reside off the reservation 
and wanted them to answer a series of questions um, that addressed uh, their own personal um, uh, experiences or their concerns or you know, their feedback pertaining to um, you know, a series of, of, of questions pertaining to education, uh, public service, transportation, health care, and the list went on and on. And so as a result of that, as you can see here, uh, based on that assessment, <coughs> education came up uh, pretty high on that criteria. And um, the Tribal Council decided to go ahead and, and take that and run with it and be able to ensure that um, all the key aspects of education from pre-K um, all the way up to post-secondary was being addressed um, in trying to figure out what exactly the community would need in order to best fit its educational needs as well. And so the one thing that they wanted to look at specifically was in regards to our existing um, job opportunities and existing careers that are currently on our reservation. Um, education um, is a big one. We have a unified school district located in our, our what we can call our headquarters uh, on the reservation in San Carlos and um, that's the San Carlos Unified School District and that school district employs um, a good handful of tribal members um, but also educates about 98 percent of our tribal members who um, decide to attend the Fort Thomas or the uh, San Carlos Unified School District. Uh, the other unified school district on the western or in the eastern end of our reservation is off the reservation and educates about probably about 95 percent of our tribal members from the community of Vilas. And um, also we have the Globe Unified School District and also the Miami Unified School District. And we also have on our reservation um, a satellite center with the Gila Community College. And, um, and so key in regards to education was one that was brought out in this evaluation. Uh, education to, to educate um, individuals to become teachers, uh, teacher aides, and administrators. The second was our health care uh, piece. Um, uh, as you all probably might know, the uh, San Carlos uh, uh, Tribal Council, San Carlos Apache Tribal Council recently signed on a 638 contract with the Indian Health Services and took over the health care uh, facility here in the last two years. And uh, the doors opened to our health care facility about two years ago, a brand new hospital. And so uh, out of that, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were going to be able to take a look at uh, um, possibly being able to build up doctors and nurses, uh, dentists, and uh, medical specialists, such as physical therapists, um, behavior health specialists as well. Um, the other is in regards to, like I had made mention, our Apache culture and language. Uh, making sure that we understood what our culture was and making sure that we're able to develop the Apache language. We were talking on the way back from lunch in regards to the four options that um, the presenter gave us uh, in regards to what our Apache language is based under. And we were kind of like, well, we heard of La Pan at one time, but at the same time, Tonto Apache is very close to us. But, you know, and we just went on with this conversation because we're not really quite sure specifically what the root of our Apache language is. However, as May mentioned, you know, the, um, the need to be able to understand that is key, especially if our basis of building up our tribal colleges is going to be based on our, our um, Apache culture and, and language. And, um, we do have uh, a gaming facility, uh, the Apache Gold Casino. Uh, they're actually going to be uh, implementing a second site here real soon in the Dudleyville area. And so we thought just coming out of the, the concept, the Tribal Council really you know, wanted to implement the customer service uh, program and possibly be able to address food and beverage and gaming specifically. Uh, because right now we realize that um, there's a much needed uh, uh, education and, and program and certification um, that needs to come out of uh, hospitality and gaming. The other is the small business development, um, the tribal businesses and existing companies that we have on our reservation. There are some small mom and pop 
shops on our reservation that uh, individuals, uh, individual tribal members build up their, their own um, arts and craft um, uh, businesses and we, we thought that would be good to address as well. And the other one is the leadership training, uh, current tribal employees and uh, tribal members who want to develop uh, their leadership training, not only in the supervision field but also management and administration. And also our criminal justice, our, uh, our uh, justice department is actually under the tribe currently um, and partially funded through the federal government and so law enforcement, judicial and corrections are all under the tribe currently and we feel that there would be a need to have uh, certain programs addressing uh, those particular career fields. And so with that understanding, we had, um, the Tribal Council had initiated uh, some objectives. And as you can see here, there's um, pretty much all the bullet points that had been addressed today in terms of just discussing the organizational chart, uh, just in terms of the um, understanding of what type of programs and what type of disciplines that we'll be able to implement. Uh, that was discussed at the Tribal Council level, um, including ensuring that we were um, not only going to be looked at as um, an a higher learning institution uh, on behalf of our tribal members, but also uh, countywide, statewide, and making sure that the Higher Learning Commission understands um, what our roles and responsibilities are and making sure that we understand what their criteria are as well. Uh, tying in with the uh, accreditation piece as well, ensuring that if we do get accredited, um, under the hands or under the wings of another uh, facility that we're able to maintain that accreditation and be able to uh, become accredited ourselves as well. And most importantly, being able to assist our students in developing um, a holistic lifestyle uh, more toward the NEB, uh, Apache uh, culture and language and uh, preserving those um, concepts as well. And most importantly as well, making sure that there was enough support uh, for professional services to our uh, faculty and staff as well. <coughs> so as a result of that discussion um, under the 2011 strategic plan, um, the Tribal Council initiated a mission statement and a vision statement to be able to have an understanding of what exactly was going to be their guiding tool to be able to initiate the, the whole concept of building up this tribal college. And as you can see here, the mission statement is the San Carlos Apache College and the NEA Controlled Liberal Arts Institution of Higher Education is dedicated to ed educational excellence through provisions of a culturally relevant curriculum in partnership with students, staff, community, and the industry. And the vision in itself, as made mention, is to ensure to honor its core value of Gajon, meaning spirituality, respect, balance, and harmony, to be recognized at the center of academic excellence that advances the Ne or the Apache worldwide and empowers lifelong learners who are fully engaged citizens, stewards, and leaders. And so phase one, in order to get to that level, uh, the Tribal Council in 2011, shortly after the recognition <coughs> of the initial uh, review of our strategic plan, um, had initiated a, a resolution and passing that resolution to recognize that um, one of the structures that were um, uh, left by the San Carlos Unified School District after they had relocated <coughs> to its current site in the district of Paradox, uh, they had left behind a full campus, uh, which is what, what we call the old junior high school. Uh, there's classrooms, I believe there's like 23 classrooms um, in that uh, particular building, uh, a cafeteria, an administration building, uh, full Wi-Fi and computer setup, uh, science labs and what have you, all within this building. And so they dedicated uh, that particular building itself to the vocational training center uh, that we currently have in place. 
knowing that that would probably be a little bit more quicker to move into, which was the vocational training center. And in 2012, a task force was formulated to spearhead the uh, evaluation and the uh, feasibility study of our tribal college uh, concept. Um, Flora was a member of that uh, task force um, and also about six or seven other individuals uh, ranging from directors to program managers to uh, administrators and I believe that the uh, tribal education uh, committee who consist of our tribal leadership as well. Five, five tribal council members were also involved in that task force as well, including tribal chairman uh, Terry Rambler. And in 2013, um, in order to uh, run with the concept of the results of that feasibility study, that there was a need to be able to bring in additional um, classes in the current post-secondary uh, satellite center that was located there. In uh, 2013, the tribe met with uh, ASU partners and also Eastern Arizona College uh, to try to help um, light a fire under this concept and all, under this feasibility that uh, resulted in uh, an embracement of our community that um, more additional classes and instructions um, were needed uh, within the community. And here's a picture of our tribal leadership uh, signing um, that relationship with uh, Arizona State University. And phase two, the moving forward piece. Um, the tribe had uh, recognized through the task force the need to be able to initiate a relationship with um, ASU and they wanted to um, uh, seal that um, relationship specifically through a legal document and uh, entered into a non-disclosure agreement uh, with ASU. And shortly thereafter, an MOU followed and also additional funding was sought out to be able to begin the process of uh, initiating uh, the steps of implementing uh, all the legal documents and all the necessary uh, governing documents and um, you know, all the pieces that were needed in order to begin the process of moving uh, the tribal college concept forward. And so the tribe did apply for an ANA grant under the United States Department of Health and Human Services and did receive that grant um, and uh, it's known as the SEEDS grant. Um, as part of the uh, process of the task force as well, the task force um, created the Articles of Incorporation and uh, had worked very closely with our Attorney General to be able to get that document created. Uh, they worked very closely with ASU partners as well to ensure that all the right language was in place and had developed that and presented it to the Tribal Council for passage, uh, which did happen in the Phase two process. And of course, we did meet with the um, with the um, ASU advisors, and uh, it was recommended that the American Indian Higher Education Consortium be consulted and um, uh, ask as well uh, to gain their support in the process that uh, we were moving into at the time. And of course, our meetings. Um, uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, we thought, well, let's go ahead and you know, seek out our counterparts as well, um, you all being one of them and also the Tohono O'odham uh, Community College being another. Uh, our general counsel um, had very close ties with the Tohono O'odham Community College along with our ASU advisors and so the meetings <coughs> with them um, were very quick in terms of ensuring that we um, were able to get together with them and find out specifically, you know, what type of pieces got them to where they were at um, and, and comparing it to where we were at at that particular time as well. And so here's just a quick picture of that group meeting with the Tohono O'odham uh, Community College. And I believe that happened in 2013, Laura? Was it 2013? And so additional steps to phase two 
the MOU with ASU had three important pieces. The first is in regards to the technical assistance uh, in establishing our tribal college. Uh, we're so glad that Dr. Hesse is able to <coughs> join us practically at every single gathering we've been, we've been uh, involved in, including uh, Jacob Moore and um, also uh, uh, Dr. Tipiconic as well. And so we've, we've been really gaining a lot of uh, input from these individuals and uh, was very much uh, pleased with um, actually not just going in with just uh, this is the way you do it, this is how you do it, you know, follow through with it, these are your steps, so on and so forth. But we were really happy that Dr. Tipiconic had provided us his how-to um, publication that had come out and um, provided us, you know, the necessary tool to be able to get us to where we're at today. Um, that MOU also uh, brought out um, a provision in terms of addressing healthy lifestyle activities uh, for our tribe and bringing in um, not only healthcare professionals to uh, give training and, and talks about uh, a certain type of healthcare lifestyle um, adaptations that are needed, including um, any type of uh, fun fill activities, as Point 3 had made mention with uh, the ASU uh, football team, basketball teams, volleyball teams coming in and hosting uh, mini camps for our tribal members um, in San Carlos. And then so the phase two actually brought out um, as a result of the MOU and the non-disclosure agreement with ASU, the need for the tribe to begin um, really seriously sitting down and talking with Eastern Arizona College uh, to see and considering that they're just 30 miles off our reservation on the eastern end um, to seeing uh, what are the possibilities of uh, them providing us the accreditation uh, piece to be able to open our doors and so as a result uh, the discussions began with the accreditation and the operational agreement. In phase three, establishing the tribal college, um, the tribal council appointed in May of um, actually April gave the um, um, April of 2015 gave the clearance for advertisements to go out for the board of regents, and uh, seven of us were appointed at the latter part of May or the latter part of April, and uh, were able to uh, meet one another in May. Uh, actually May 1st of 2015. Uh, I currently chair the Board of Regents. Uh, Jonathan Clark is the vice chairperson. Uh, Ina Perez is the treasurer. Uh, Tolbert Massey is a member and so is uh, Nolita who's here with us today. Nolene and also Beth Hinton and Martha Lynn Tapalai are members. Now each of us hold our little own special uh, positions within the tribe um, or within another tribe. I, for example, am a, a prosecutor for the San Carlos Apache Tribe, and uh, Jonathan Clark is an IT specialist, or no, IT director with the um, uh, Salt River, Cuba, Maricopa Indian Communities Gaming Establishment, uh, Gaming Facility, um, Talking Sticks. And uh, Ina Perez is currently um, a case manager with the uh, Behavioral Health Services for the San Carlos Apache Tribe. Uh, Tobert Massey is actually uh, a director of uh, business enterprises for one of our districts, and that would be the Seven Mile Wash District. And um, Nolita is a child care director for our San Carlos Tribal Child Care Program. And Beth Hinton is a, a Fort Thomas Unified School District member and Martha Lynn Takalai is the principal for our newly developed uh, elementary school in the community of Vilas. Uh, that particular elementary school came about after um, actually years, probably about three or three, three to five years of debate between the, the tribe, the tribal council, tribal leadership, and also the Fort Thomas Unified School District wanting to have the elementary school or the school system brought back onto our reservation. And so as a result, the uh, elementary school began its, its uh, doors opening this, just this past year. And so in phase three as well, um, 
The board has been meeting since May of 2015, and um, we've uh, uh, reaffirmed the um, approval of the um, the uh, governing documents that the Tribal Council through the task force had, had created and had implemented and approved through the council. And we're at the process of hiring a president currently. Uh, we had initiated advertisements since November of last year and had heard that there was quite a few regions of uh, colleges that were wanting to look for a president as well, including, <coughs> including a few here in Arizona. So we thought, oh, okay, we're going to be uh, pulling and tugging. And as you all had me mention salary, we're probably going to have to go above and beyond, you know, and, and so on and so forth. But we're, we're happy to say that we're, we're about there. Um, as a result of 23 applicants, we were down to, um, to this one. So we're, we're happy to, to announce that. And so, of course, our meetings uh, continued with the Tohono O'odham Community College, and we're happy that you all were able to host us uh, today as well. And um, as made mention, there's a satellite center, um, the Gila Community College Satellite Center, located in San Carlos, and they um, uh, have been informed that we're ready to move forward uh, with our tribal college. And so right now we're meeting with them and transitioning them out and moving us in. And here's a picture of the Board of Regents at our first meeting, along with Chairman Rambler and uh, also a few members of the task force, including our planning director and uh, uh, one board member when I had presented this, this picture to one of our, our, at our presentation. Uh, she was like, we're like deer standing in the roadway in the middle of the night with the headlights coming toward us. What do we get ourselves into? And so I, I said, well, it just tells you that when we take our next picture, we'll be looking a little bit more uh, professional, I guess, I said. And so part of the phase three establishing the tribal college, um, the hiring of the, of the president would be key to moving us forward uh, through all the the input that we've received, not only from the ASU advisors, but also from others and from you all here today. Uh, the key is in regards to hiring that president and moving us forward in a direction that would be best feasible for our community members and ensuring that most importantly that we're able to identify, you know, what programs and disciplines that we need to implement as well, including making sure that that strategic plan that was developed um, early on by the tribal leadership with the help of the task force um, is, um, is a document that we can be able to fine tune to ensure that we're able to move forward um, as a startup tribal college. And here's your organizational chart. Now the question I was going to ask in regards to the organizational chart, it, looked, it looks very familiar to what we have here in terms mm -hmm. of the very first one that you all had or the one that you all had amended in December. Now the question I would have was, did this work for you on the onset of your development as a tribal college? Does anyone know that? The original, very yeah. original from many years ago? Yeah. I would not know. I would okay. know as a historical perspective. Although okay. the similarity is that is our that new true? one, our new one has four VPs and you have four VPs while our older one had six. Six. Okay. And yours okay. resembles our new one okay. um, yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. And so we, we, we looked at it and we said, okay, this is this is what we can start off with currently. Mm -hmm. You know, at least to begin mm -hmm. with yes. and begin moving in a direction that we know that when we open up our doors we can be operational. And so um, we, we'd like some feedback on this at the end if we, if we can as well. And so phase four, becoming operational. Um, as you all had made mention, um, budget was key. Uh, currently we have ANA um, that uh, currently funds us um, close, to, close to half a million a year. Um, to kind of give us an understanding of where we're at, what direction we're moving into, what have you. And so we're looking at um, ensuring that um, you know, we do have extra funding that's made available. 
Now, as Meg mentioned, the um, Gila Community College has a satellite center in San Carlos. Um, the Tribal Council had been funding that um, satellite center for, gosh, maybe about the last five years, I believe. And so they recently came to us and uh, came to us, meaning the, the tribe, and had requested for additional funding to be able to keep that satellite center open. And so I, I was really happy to hear um, that the Tribal Council approved that funding fully. And so that's an additional um, 400000 that they're going to be given to us once the transition does take place as well. So we'll, we'll have a good chunk of change by the time we get ready to open our doors in the goal of 2017. And in regards to the uh, becoming operational phase, uh, the development of the, of the uh, academic programs as well as made mention, and also the recruiting of the students, and um, that piece I'll, I'll carry on a little bit more with a, with a different uh, slide here. Um, and of course, securing and uh, maintaining our locations. Uh, we have two current sites um, that have been identified uh, by the Tribal Council as approved. Uh, one of the sites, as made mention, was the uh, old junior high school uh, campus. Uh, that again is uh, located in San Carlos or outside the outskirts of the town of San Carlos. But the other site is actually where the satellite center is located for the Gila Community College. And there they have their uh, office with an administration office and uh, four separate buildings that identify their classrooms as well. Um, in addition to uh, becoming operational, um, we're working towards our relationship with Eastern Arizona College and uh, in um, asking that we work under their accreditation and uh, in developing that um, that uh, operational agreement as well. And of course, most importantly, working toward our own accreditation as well. Um, we were uh, very much grilled, ensuring that you know not only do we start now, but we keep it motivated to keep. Uh, the understanding that um, not only are we under um, going to be under a close watchful eye by the Higher Learning Commission for our accreditation process, but also by our own uh, governing board as well. And most importantly as well, I've developed that relationship with the uh, AHEC committee. So here's a, a quick picture of our uh, current satellite center. As you can see, uh, there's quite a few bu buildings that identify the site in itself. And uh, again, it's all operational and um, very little maintenance that would be needed in order for us to be able to move in. And so phase five, uh, continuing our growth and staying Sustainability, just basically, you know, maintaining our accreditation uh, wing under, uh, hopefully, will be Eastern Arizona College and uh, working toward our own accreditation uh, process. But most importantly, ensuring that we continue to work with the relationship with our community members um, and also the the tribe as a whole, because the tribe is the biggest employer on our reservation and um, ensuring that we understand their needs and being able to move in that direction that would best um, suit their, their programs and their, their services to the people. And as Maid mentioned, uh, enrollment, uh, our enrollment outlook currently, uh, there stands to be 110 students at our San Carlos Satellite Center uh, under the Gila Community College and in our Tribal uh, Education Department's Office of Higher Education, they currently have 134 uh, tribal members that are uh, enrolled in a two-year college. And we also have, again, made mention of our four unified school districts that educate our tribal members, ranging anywhere from 68 to 70 graduates per year. And of course, those numbers will, I'm sure, in, uh, increase as we move on. And here's a picture of our future and our current students. Um, and this is who we're working towards. Uh, not only being able to get them where they need to be in life, but also be able to move those that may have swayed um, onto a path of 
uh, possibly having no hope to hope that they can become educated. And that's our presentation.